Okay guys, welcome to the last session of this video where we'll talk about the multi-factor authentication for secure login in free IPA. All right, so how do we do that? So how we do that now, we we'll dive into the free IPA portal. So what we do here is this, we want to ensure that as users are logging in, they will require second factor authentication to log into the system apart from the password. All right. So there are two ways of configuring that we can enable factor authentication via token. You can also do that by using SSH. So let us first of all talk about the, the token based authentication. So how we achieve that is by this. Click on a particular user. Here we are in the user section, right? So you can either ask the users to do that by themselves by sending the URL of the server to the user. So what the user does is let us have a uh, simulate the user. Let's assume that the user opens the computer mode and you press the information then you now have to log in now to log in so i'm going to be using a booker to log in now right so this is the first time a booker is logging in so it requires a booker to put the current password Then it's quite a good to put the set the new password. So we now do what? Now set. So this is now Edgar logging in, all right? So we can see the user information of Edgar. The next thing is that Edgar can set his two-factor authentication by going in here and clicking on add authentication. So you can now see here, maybe two-factor authentication, and then he can now do what? Add. So when you add now, yes, you can see this scan code. So here you can use the Google Authenticator to scan this code, or you can use free OTP to scan this code. You can also use Microsoft Authenticator to scan the code as well. There are many authentication apps uh, available to do that, all right? So, so the user can now be able to scan this code and then get the description, all right? And so in the next login, he'll be able to use the authentication to log in. So apart from that, instead of a user doing that by himself, administrator can also do that for him and then get the code to the user. So we are here we are in the administrator portal. So what we do is that we log in, we click on the user that we want to configure the multi-factor authentication. And here on the action section, we click add OTP to. So the user unique ID is what? We can add the description if you want, we can add the vendor, we can add the model, CVR, and key. So, here we will need the algorithm to be SHA1. Uh, if you want, you can increase the SHA. So, here the clock interval is 30. All right, so then we cannot add. So, here we will need to use SNP2 to snip this code and then send it to the client. So, when the clients download Google Authentication, they can use it to generate the token. Right. Another form of doing that is that we can use a Google Chrome authentication extension, which I've already added. So I can use it to scan now. You can see that I've already started using it for Daniel. So here I will click to um, to add for to Ebuka. So I will click on this. I'll scan this. This is how we scan it on Google Chrome. Then we can scan. So here it has been added, right? Daniel, and this is for it. I can then close this center, or you can use your screenshots and snap it and send it to Ebuka. So, the next is so on the OTP token, we can see that we have Ebuka, Ebuka is already showing, and this one is the one for Daniel. So, the next thing is under the uh, user, when we have already added for Ebuka, we can now go down here and the toggle on multi factor authentication. Why we toggle on the multi factor authentication is that the next time that Ebuka will be logging in, it will require to enter the multi-factor authentication token. All right, let us try to log in now. I will use the name Ebuka. All right, so that is SSH minus RL Ebuka and the IP address. So when we hit enter, it will require us to put the first factor. The first factor is the password. So we are going to be typing it. So it asks us to get the second factor. So the second factor is the token. So let us get a token here for Ebuka. So let's test the token. Now you can see that I'm logged in now. I'm logged in as a right? So this is how we can be able to log in using multi-factor authentication for token, token base. 
all right the next section i'm going to be talking about using ssh key all right for logging using ssh key we have to generate the ssh key from here right we have to generate the ssh key that is ssh keygen right so when we hit keygen enter to ask us to provide which location and what's the IP address i put dot slash so dot slash is the current folder i put the name of the person i'm generating this for is ebuka ebuka dot dot pen right ebuka key dot pen right so i've created ebuka key dot pen look at it here so right now i'll copy the public key so this is the public key i'll copy it so now that i copy the public key i will open the account for ebuka under this you can see that two-factor authentication is enabled but this time i have to add ssh public key under the ssh public key i'll press the ssh public key that i just copied from my local system then i will say what's set so is this ssh public key now that we can use to log in to the system so how we do that login now is this so since i have already established the ssh public key now i can use this ssh key to log into this system so how do i do that so i'm going to be using this tool for that right so i will let me get the ip address all right so this is the ip address uh, the client for that second for the virtual machine copy this so i'll go to my mobile s -tan. so ssh press this here. select the user is Edica. And the key, so I have to browse the location of the key, and here is the key, and this time it's public, uh, private. I'm going to be using to connect. So I hit enter, accept, and then it's asking me for the fetch factor, right? Fetch factor is what the password. The second factor is the uh, authentication key, which is this. So you can see how we use test now to log in so we are able to log into ABK. Right? So this is how we will be able to log in. So we see that we use the SSH key token and also the password. That is the trick to be able to log into this server. If you want to minimize it to only SSH, you can also implement that by taking this off thank you guys so this is just the end of this class please if you see value in this video please i would like you to subscribe subscribe to my channel like share and also comment you may equally help someone out there that is struggling with free ipa by sharing this information someone can be able to find solution okay like i said we are out here to provide a valuable information around cyber security environment all right please we would like to hit 1000 subscribers very soon please help us to promote this this channel thank you very much have a wonderful